You're listening to The Alien Observer. I'm David McElroy. I didn't really know Joey that well. But when you help a person sell a house, you get to know him better than you might think. You talk with him a lot. You hear frustration in his voice when there's bad news. And you learn to read relaxed happiness when things are good. Joey was a banker in Atlanta. And I was part of the team that sold the home of his late mother here in Birmingham last year. So I talked with him quite a bit for several months. I can still hear his happy laughter the last time when we talked on the phone. I found out Thursday afternoon that Joey died in his sleep two nights ago. The fact that he was my age didn't really say anything about my own life, of course. But it still seems sobering. He was overweight, and he had dealt with high blood pressure. But it was apparently a heart attack that killed him. I haven't been able to stop thinking about Joey since I found out about his death. Because he seems like a symbol of something that is pervasive in this society. Maybe I'm wrong to see him that way. Maybe he would have died even if he had taken perfect care of his body and his health. But I can't help seeing him as a stand-in for a lot of the people around me. And most of all, for myself. Suicide is obvious when it's sudden and the intent is clear. But slow suicide through self-destructive behavior is less obvious, and it's far more common. Look around yourself. Look at what people are doing to their bodies. Look at what they're eating. Look at the percentage of people around us who are bigger and bigger and bigger. When I was a child, it was almost unheard of for someone in public to be morbidly obese. Today, they're everywhere. They're riding motorized carts through Walmart on their way to buy more of the poison which has already destroyed their health. I'm not riding in one of those motorized carts, but I look at my own actions, the ways in which I eat and I don't take care of myself well enough. And I fear that I could end up like them, despite my best efforts. And that terrifies me. The things that some of us do to abuse our bodies do amount to slow suicide. Quite literally. Our physical and emotional needs are battling each other. And the people around us who don't have the same emotional demons tend to be judgmental since... They can't imagine why a rational person would make such dangerous choices. When we rely on sheer willpower to stop the abusive behavior, we can hold back the bad behavior for a while. But it's patiently waiting for a tiny crack in our resolve, ready to slip back in and wreak havoc. The only thing that can break the pattern is finding a way to get the emotional needs met for love, acceptance, understanding, approval, whatever it is, to finally break the back of the inner demon. But that's easier said than done. So many of us continue being sucked back into a path towards slow and predictable suicide. Things such as Joey's death really help me focus on the fact that I have only one body. All of us do. And if you abuse that body for long enough by not taking good care of it, you're going to kill yourself. 
in the end, the result is the same on your life and on the lives of those who love you as if you had just put a gun to your head and pulled the trigger. If you'll stick around after this quick break, I'll be back with more. When I launched my first podcast, I took a friend's recommendation about which hosting service to use. He told me that Anchor.fm was the only one that I ought to consider. And it turns out that he was right. I had such a great experience with the free Anchor service that I'm also using it for this second podcast too. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. And best of all, it's free. I don't know how they do it, but it's free. I record and edit my podcasts on my own MacBook, but Anchor even has tools to allow you to record straight into a web browser or even your mobile phone if you're not ready for the challenge of doing your own recording. Anchor will handle all the distribution of your podcast too, getting it into all of the major podcast directories such as Apple, Google, and Spotify. They even have a plan by which you can run ads if you want, but you're not required to if you don't want to. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast, all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. We pretend that these are medical problems, but they're really problems of the heart because we abuse our bodies out of a desire to fill needs that we don't know how to fill. Today, our society is wealthy enough that we have quick access to foods which didn't even exist a hundred years ago, substances that are more like poison than food. But why do we do it? We do it because we're unhappy. We do it because abusing ourselves in these seemingly small ways will take our attention off the things we don't want to feel. And we find that these are socially acceptable things to do. Even if others judge us or lecture us, it's still more acceptable than the alternative addictions. So why are we so unhappy? That's something I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I'm going to talk about some more later. The more I watch people, the more obvious it is that most people are miserably unhappy, and they have no idea how to break free of the cycle that has them doing things they hate, spending time with people they don't love, and wondering how their lives ever got so miserable. And for the ones who are most out of touch with their feelings, they cover it up by eating or drinking or popping pills or any of the other addictions that will get their minds off the hurt or the numbness that's taken over inside their hearts. This isn't living. This is just existing. This is just waiting around for life to get over so we can die. And unless we're willing to confront the core issues, 
and change the things that need to change. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to admit that what we're doing is slow suicide. And when we drop dead in our sleep, or sitting at our desk, or whatever we do to pass our days, we have no one but ourselves to blame for sending ourselves to early graves. We can change our lives. We can live the lives that we claim we want. But most of us don't seem to have the courage to even save our own lives. The Alien Observer is written and produced by me, David McElroy. If you'd like to get in touch, send me an email at davidmcelroy at mac.com. That's D-A-V-I-D-M-C-E-L-R-O-Y at M-A-C dot com. Or go to anchor.fm slash thealienobserver to record a voice response. Anything you send might end up on a future episode. There's also a donation link on that page if you'd like to support the show. For more about me and what I've written in the past, including thousands of articles over the last 10 years, go to davidmcelroy.org. The Alien Observer is copyright 2020 by David McElroy. All rights are reserved on the planet Earth, but rights are still pending on the planets where the rest of the aliens live. Theme music is The Boy and the Kite by Solitude and is licensed courtesy of Soundstripe. The birds and crickets from the opening was recorded live in my own backyard. Please join me again next time for more observations about this strangely alien world that's all around us.